The traditional and idyllic image of Assam. Lush, tranquil and productive. But it hides a troubled history. Tea, as well as oil, have helped to make this a wealthy state. But they've also fueled a bitter battle over sovereignty. Fighters muster on the border. Guerrillas of the United Liberation Front of Assam, ULFA, prepared to escort a camera team to their bases inside Bhutan. The first time they've allowed their operations to come under scrutiny. There are 3,000 fighters battling against the Indian and Assam authorities. Assam was an independent kingdom for centuries until it was absorbed into British India. It won the struggle to stay within India rather than be assimilated into East Pakistan. But the people feel isolated from the center of power in Delhi and as close to Southeast Asia as to India. The 50 ULFA camps attack with weapons from Eastern Europe. Since January, the armies responded with increasing ferocity. <laughs> The cause attracts both men and women, both in the ranks and in command. The movement began as a political one in the late 70s, but the present organization, ULFA, took up arms in the mid-80s. The conflicts claimed 15,000 lives so far. ULFA say there are more Assamese waiting to join than they can clothe or equip and recruits aren't put off by what they see as army propaganda. When they cross the border into Assam, gunfights with the Indian army often break out. For several months, the army has intensified its pursuit. ULFA has been a prescribed organization since 1990. ULFA say that they only carry on because they have the support of the local people. The other side to their campaign includes guerrilla attacks on industrial installations, military convoys and political assassinations. The Liberation Front has a series of grievances. They claim that the Assamese culture is under threat. Not only are their aspirations to independence being crushed, but they oppose immigration from Bangladesh, which they say undermines the traditional majority in Assam. The ULFA complains that oil revenues have long been siphoned off by the central government in Delhi. But the Assam government says it receives royalties and that the proportion is fair. Tea from the famous Assam plantations makes up 20% of the world's crop. But the major tea houses operate from Calcutta in Bengal. And ULFA says the income doesn't benefit Assam. The manager was once a wholehearted supporter of the ULFA, but now he believes the front has lost its way. There's a lot of extortion going on. There's a lot of uh, terrorist activities in and around Assam. And as a whole, Northeast is badly affected and uh, they have made a uh, TA target for extortion of money by kidnapping, by blackmailing, and there are many ways. The government used the extortion complaints by tea companies as the spur to relaunch an offensive against the ULFA seven years ago. But the front protests its targets are legitimate. 
who have done nothing uh, for the people of Assam, for the development of Assam, uh, we appeal to them to donate money to us. It is our right that we must have to donate uh, for the struggle of the Assamese people, not for any other cause. They is struggle for the life and death of the Assamese nation, so we must have donated us. Above all, the front is angry about army brutality. The Indian army makes frequent patrols through rural areas. This farm was raided and six youths were taken away as terrorist suspects. Local people say the army is brutal and indiscriminate. This woman, a mother of ten, described how one of her sons was tortured, then taken away to jail. This man described how his son was beaten by soldiers, then shot in the back. They said he was trying to run away. His father said he was on the ground, injured. Human rights monitors believe the army tactic is a common one. Fake encounter means, uh, say, one people were picked up by army, and two days uh, after two days, his body, uh, his bullet, uh, injured body were uh, handed over to police, and army always issue one uh, press release that uh, he tried to uh, escape. The conflict isn't confined to just the rural areas. Even the capital, Guwahati, is affected. But the Assam government disputes allegations that the army is doing anything other than defending the people. The extremist groups, they took uh, arms in their hand and they killed the people, innocent people. They extorted the money from the people and they kidnapped the people and therefore to prevent, it, prevent them. Army was deployed. Normally it is the job of the army persons what is their job, basically? Their job, well, there is an extremist, there is an insurgent, he is well equipped, well armed, get hold of him, disarm him, then hand him over to the police. It is none of your business to take him and to punish them. The remaining part is for the law. It's not only the army which is accused of abuses. This man was threatened by the police. Beware, the day you come back from Delhi, you will be made naked and given a public bashing up and if you are still prepared, come. Uh, on, uh, no action was taken. That is what is hurting me, you know. If we senior officers who are supposed to protect human rights, we violate human rights of the family members of our own employees, then what uh, justice we can deliver to the society? The United Liberation Front of Assam thrives on such discontent. ULFA's popularity is growing and it presents a budgeting threat to the authorities. Ami Hosu, Revolution Party, Hokti Nisitakor, Aji Party Honike, Jituna Hobo, Harode Sorkari, Jin and Jin of Habok, Aji International Sobe, Aji Govdane, the Revolution Party Hodai, Miturgane, Hyate Hodai Hazu. And one of the six founders of the organization reiterated ULFA's strength and appeal. Alpha Hunter Badido, Alpha Huise Jati Mukti Biplover. Omri Putro. I adamant for the liberation. By any means, I want the liberation. We appeal to the people to convince the extremist group uh, by give up, the, uh, give up the violence and come to the negotiation table. But responsibility for peace talks has been passed out of Assam to the central government in Delhi. Neither side looks ready to compromise. And as India prepares to commemorate 50 years of independence from Britain, the conflict generated by another fight for independence will no doubt cast a wide shadow on the country's celebrations.